Hey y'all, Chris here with Survival Dispatch. Today we're going to have a look at a bunch of power banks and power stations that are a portion of what we've been sent over the past few months. And we came to the conclusion on each of these that they were the best in class. So we're going to start with a small power bank, go to a little bit larger power bank, a 300 watt power station, 600 watt power station, 1200 watt power station, 1500 watt power station. We're going to start plugging stuff in and see just what kind of load they can take in real world applications. We're going to start by looking at this Shargeek Storm 2 power bank first. It's a pretty nifty device. It's a 25,600 milliamp hours. Right now I have this Olight Warrior 3 plugged in and charging. I have that old iPhone SE plugged in and charging and don't want to get my hand in the way. I have my MacBook Pro over there plugged in and charging. So the neat thing with this is that there's a display on it and it tells me right now that we're drawing 35 watts of power. So this device is capable of cranking out 100 watts of power. So we're not putting it under much of a load right now. Price per milliamp hour for something like this is more than, let's say, that Crave over there uh, because of the smaller form factor, extra bells and whistles like the, you know, the, the output screen is similar to what you'd expect on one of these more expensive, larger power stations as opposed to a little power bank like this. Uh, however, suffice it to say, this is in my EDC bag because of its size and convenience. It has three AC ports on it, so it has two USB-Cs, one USB-A, and it has a barrel port for a 12 volt adapter in it. Next up, we're gonna have a look at the Crave Power Pack. Um, we have reviewed this in the past. This is a 50,000 milliamp power bank. Have the same devices plugged into it that we had plugged into the Storm 2. So the Olight Warrior 3 flashlight, the old iPhone SE over there, and my MacBook Pro. The reason that we've scored this as best in class for a slightly larger power bank is this thing is ultra durable. It's fallen out of my truck multiple times, barely has any scratches on it, did not crack the case. When we were at George Bushcraft a few weeks ago, this was the community phone charger and half a dozen people charged their phone Friday, Saturday, Sunday, did not run out of power until Sunday afternoon. So again, you might find cheaper, uh, power banks with 50,000 milliamp hours of capacity, but you, they likely won't be as durable as this unit is. And as you can see, it's not struggling at all. It's, it's showing, you know, it's a full charge and all the devices are powering up nicely. Right. Next up is this EcoFlow River 2. It's a 300 watt power station. And for starters, we're just gonna go through and show some of the basic functionality. Uh, right now, we've got, again, the Olight Warrior 3 plugged into it, my MacBook Pro plugged into it, the old iPhone SE down here, which is charging up. That's at 28% now. And I also have a 12-volt device plugged into it, which is this air compressor uh, to put in your car or truck. And so I'm going to fire it up, and we'll see what peak wattage is. Right now, we're drawing about 40 watts off of the station has a nice display on it. So when I fired this up as well, it took us up to 85, 86 watts of draw. So nowhere near um, what this power station is capable of delivering on. Unplug the MacBook Pro for a second. You'll see it has two AC ports, two USB-A ports, one USB-C port, and one car port for 12 volts. We're going to come back to each of the power stations, not the power banks, and we're going to put load test on all of them. We're going to run the fan, the vacuum cleaner, the blow dryer, these cooking uh, appliances, and see where each one of these uh, basically fails. And that way you can decide for yourself kind of what capacity and what output is suitable for your purposes. One. All right, now we're going to jump into the actual load tests to show you what real world devices each one of these power stations is capable of powering. We're not we're done with the power banks. 
So the first thing we're going to do, if you're down south here and your AC's out, you're probably going to want to be able to run a fan. So we'll get this guy going, put him on his highest setting. And this is supposed to draw 10 watts of power. And it is drawing 21 watts of power. So double what the sticker said on this guy. So just for the heck of it, we'll go ahead and we'll plug in this DeWalt battery charger. It's rated at it to draw 60 watts of power. Let's see how that guy does. So didn't take us up too terribly much. Um, as you can see, the red light is flashing, so it's charging. We have uh, 51 watts that we're drawing. Now, we only have two AC uh, receptacles on this guy, so we can't plug the next device in uh, without unplugging something. So we'll go ahead and we'll unplug the, the DeWalt. We'll leave the fan running, and we'll try this curling iron, which is rated for 200-watt draw. Okay, so this guy's plugged in now, and uh, I'm not uh, licensed to operate this device. There we go. We got it turned on. Well, they weren't kidding. Uh, that took a quick jump. Actually, I think if uh, we move the temperature up here, there we go. All right, so I put it on the maximum heat, which is 400 degrees, and... Believe it or not, we're drawing 154, 155 watts. So this guy, uh, no problem whatsoever, running a curling iron and this fan. So we'll get rid of both of these guys, and we'll see how good the spike is on the EcoFlow. Because we're going to try this rice cooker next. And the rice cooker is rated to pull 450 watts. Again, we have 300 watts of continuous power, 600 watts. Of surge so let's turn this guy on so here's another interesting uh, part so this is rated to draw 450 watts on its highest setting it's actually only drawing 304 watts and it's not tripping this device out but Theoretically, if we plug anything else in, it should, if it's a sustained wattage, go over the power that this can output. So let's go back to the curling iron, since it's a 200 watt draw on its highest setting. See if we can make this thing fail. So that's really interesting. I've got this up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We still have the rice cooker working away down here. And we're still drawing right around 300 watts. So I don't know if it takes time for a curling iron like this to uh, reach a certain temperature before it draws more wattage or what the case may be. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug that. And we'll go ahead and we'll plug something in a little bit more powerful. So off camera we couldn't get this air fryer to work on the EcoFlow. it's you know pretty significant draw 1200 watts we'll try it again here we have the ac receptacles turned on we plug it in come down here nothing that clicking that you hear is just the timer uh, it doesn't even have enough power to turn this sucker on so if you're wondering where we failed at, we basically failed at utilizing the curling iron and you could run that plus the DeWalt battery charger. Um, or you could disconnect those two and run the rice cooker, but that's it. So 300 watts base power, 600 watts surge. It's interesting how when we put a bigger load on it, it won't even try and power it up. It probably does that to protect itself. The next power station that we're looking at is this Blue Eddy, and it's a 600 watt output surge up to 1200 watts, by the way. We've plugged the same devices in again, just to show the basic functionality. So the iPhone SE, old antique iPhone SE, is still charging. The Olight Warrior 3 flashlight is charging. My MacBook Pro is charging. 
and we have the 12 volt uh, portable compressor and light plugged in as well. Before we turn that on, we're drawing 5960 watts of power. We'll plug this guy on. So that's pretty interesting. This guy took us up to the same 85 watts uh, of draw with the four devices that we had uh, from the EcoFlow River tube prior to that. So we're going to move on to the next device. Again, with just some basic functionality tests. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Bluetti has two AC ports. It has two USB-A ports, one USB-C port. It has a, a car port out for 12 volts. It also has this... Uh, nifty light on it as well, which is kind of handy if you're camping or on the trail. Several different levels of intensity. So up next again is the Blue Eddy. It's a 600 watts constant power, surge up to 1200. We've got the DeWalt battery charger plugged in. It's drawing 46, 47 watts. We're gonna turn the fan on and crank it all the way up. We're drawing 67 watts. Um, nothing significant so I think what we'll do is we will unplug the fan and we'll leave that battery charger in there and let's plug in our rice cooker which pulls 450 watts so our rice cooker you heard that click is now drawing power Let's have a look over here on our screen. We are drawing 485 total watts between the battery charger and the rice cooker. But again, we only have two receptacles, so we've maxed out those ports. But again, at 600 watts, we could still be charging electronic devices, you know, phones, laptops, those sort of things. The only reason we're not plugging them in is because when we overload these suckers, we don't want it to cause any issues with our other devices. So we'll unplug the DeWalt, and actually I think we'll unplug the rice cooker as well. So that just took us down to zero load. We're gonna take this air fryer, which would not even turn on on the 300 watt EcoFlow, and see what happens when we plug it into the Blue Eddy. So it just went super fast. It spiked at 775 watts and instantly went overload. There's a little red light here that shows it's on overload. So we'll unplug it. And the overload light is still lit up. So let's try turning those ports on and off. There we go, back on again. So we have zero draw on this right now. We'll go back to the air fryer. It's a 1200 watt draw on a 600 watt base power. 1200 watt surge, plug her in, 769 watts, right back down to zero, overload came back on again. So we can power all these smaller devices on both the EcoFlow and the Blue Eddy, uh, whether it be the rice cooker, the DeWalt power, or battery charger, pardon me, the fan that we definitely need down here when it gets too hot, and we still have extra room. We could run other things as well. As I mentioned, we're just not doing it for safety sake. So that's where the Blue Eddy stopped. And we'll have a page up on our website that goes into detail as far as what the load was and how far each of these machines got when utilizing these devices. The next power station is a pretty big jump up. It's the Wopez 1200 watt power station. It has a nice LED screen on it. We have the same devices plugged in again, the 12 volt air compressor, my MacBook Pro, the antique iPhone SE, and the Olight Warrior 3. We're currently drawing 32 watts of power. Turn the compressor on, see what it spikes at. So some of these devices are starting to charge up now. So we actually only drew 74 watts of power this time. That's not putting any load at all on this size of a power station. Okay, y'all, we're gonna pick up with the Wopez 1200 watt power station. The fan is plugged in, running on high. The DeWalt battery charger is plugged in and running. We're pulling 18 watts next to nothing. We've got the rice cooker, fixing to turn it on. 
So we'll power it up. These guys turn off the screen to say power. You just have to hit the power button to get it to fire back up again. And here we go. You can see the wattage rising dramatically. And it looks like we're topping out around 395 watts. So not too bad at all. So I think we'll leave that guy plugged in and we'll unplug the battery, the Dewalt battery charge, and we'll unplug the fan. And let's try plugging in something that draws more of a load. This curling iron is supposedly draws 200 watts. So let's see what happens when we get it going. So it's set on its highest setting at 400 watts, or sorry, 400 degrees. And now we're drawing some appreciable wattage. We're up around 505, 502, 510 watts. Still well short of the 1200 watt capacity of this device. So we know that the air fryer uh, has shut down the 300 watt EcoFlow, the 600 watt Blue Eddy. So let's unplug this uh, curling iron and let's grab this uh, big boy over here that's 1200 watts i think we better unplug the rice cooker as well just to see what happens with this sucker and just like that we're rising steadily we're almost up to a thousand watt draw now looks like it topped out at 980 watts Let's try our 200 watt curling iron and see if we can run both of them simultaneously. So you can cook and uh, make your hair look as nice as mine at the same time. So we've got the curling iron set back up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, looks like we're going to settle uh, 1,082 watt draw. So we could plug in the fan, the Dewalt, and run all those devices simultaneously. It uh, definitely isn't going to do the next jump up, which is our vacuum cleaner here, which is uh, 1,440 watts. And then after that, this blow dryer is 1,875. So let's unplug these guys. And let's take the next jump up from the air fryer. So the air fryer was... 1200 watts max draw we're going to plug the vacuum cleaner in which again is 1440 watts and see what happens with this 1200 watt Wopez power station so it's rising pretty quickly So we're sitting between 900 and 1,000 watts with it in the upright position. And I'm not uh, licensed to operate this device. So we're going to take a break for a second so I can figure out how to get the uh, beater bar working on it. And with the beater bar running, believe it or not, it only draws that 974. So not a significant draw. So just for the heck of it. We'll leave that guy running. Let's go back to our handy dandy curling iron, which is 200 watts max output again. So we're pulling 1,036 uh, watts off of this guy. So I think what we'll do is we'll shut both of these down and we'll see if it's capable of running uh, the toaster oven and pretty sure it won't run the blow dryer. Okay, y'all, so we unplugged everything from the Wopez 1200. We've got this toaster oven plugged in now, which draws 1,500 watts, 300 more than its capacity. Let's see what happens when we turn this guy on. It's on its highest setting, 450 degrees. Uh, wattage is climbing heavily, 1,254, 1,256 watts of draw, and the Wopez is overperforming. You know, it says that it shuts off at 1,200 watts, but we're pulling the 1,256 watts no problem with this toaster oven. Uh, I'm impressed. 1255 is where it settled. So let's disconnect the toaster oven and plug in what is theoretically, at least by specs, the largest draw device that we have, which is 
which is this blow dryer, which is rated to pull 1875 watts. So we'll get it on hot, turn on high, climbing rapidly. Pulling 13, 1400. Wow, the Lopez again. Uh, <laughs> I almost spoke too soon there, I guess. It hit 1400 steady, and as you, you might be able to see it in the video, uh, the warning overload is flashing. It spiked and held at 1400 watts for a couple seconds and then shut itself down to protect itself. So, the cool thing is, though, is that we know. With the Wopez, we can charge all of our devices. We could run a fan. We could run a rice cooker. We could run an air fryer. We could charge our batteries for our cordless tools. We could run a curling iron. So of all the stuff here, the only thing that we were not able to run was this 1875 watt blow dryer, which is 50% plus almost 60% above the 1200 watt rating on the Wopez. Again, this is one of the reasons we chose it as one of the best in class. The cost per watt hour for that device actually is the most economical out of all of these. The last one is the big boy, this BioLite. It is 1500 watts of power storage. Again, we're doing a basic functionality check. So we have the iPhone SE plugged in, the Olight Warrior 3 plugged in, my MacBook Pro and the 12 volt air compressor. Right now, we're drawing 32, 33 watts, the same as we did on the other devices. In this case, though, we have three AC ports, uh, two USB-Cs, actually three. This one can actually be used both to input power as well as output if you don't have this adapter with you. And 12-volt car port as well. So we're drawing the same wattage as we did on the other ones. Let's do a quick test and turn the air compressor on. So that stabilized around 87 watts of output. So barely uh, making this guy sweat whatsoever. We're going to turn the rice cooker on first, which again is rated for 450 watts, although it doesn't seem to be drawing quite that much even when we have it turned on. So it's just a little under. It's drawing 400 watts of power right now. So we know the air fryer though is 1200 watts. So theoretically with the two of them plugged in here, we should be over the 1500 watt capacity of this guy. Let's see what happens. So that instantly brought the wattage output up. We're at 1250 um, watts being drawn, which is still eh, 250 below what this device is capable of doing. So, and of course, you know, the fan, the Dewalt battery charger, those small things are going to have, they're not even going to break a sweat on this. So we'll turn on the curling iron, crank it up to 400 degrees. So I don't know if it, if I'm not familiar with these devices, as you can tell from my lack of hair, but it does not seem to be drawing anything significant off the BioLite. So we're actually capable of running the air fryer, the Ross cooker, and this curling iron, all of them simultaneously. So I accidentally skipped over our vacuum cleaner, which is 1,440 watts. Let's try it just by itself. Uh, based on how it ran off the Wopez, we should be fine. We're drawing the same type of wattage that we were off the Wopez, a little over 900. Let's see if we kick the bottom on. Really doesn't make a significant difference when we turn this on. So let me just add that it, it's probably pretty unlikely that you have a power outage and you want to use a device like this to vacuum your uh, carpets when you need other things like food and so on and so forth. However, if you live in an apartment or if your driveway is a significant distance from your garage or your house, and you want to vacuum your vehicle out, this guy can easily handle the vacuum cleaner, just like the Wopez did as well. So, you know, again, it's just a matter of convenience for people who don't have a receptacle close by. Go ahead and vacuum at home instead of having to go to a car wash. So we're going to unplug the 
the vacuum cleaner, which has been turned off. Nothing has been able to run the hair dryer yet because again, it spikes at 1875 watts. Let's see if the Bluetti can handle it. So that's on high and we're drawing 1250 watts, no problem. So that basically shows you the benefit of having the additional wattage. Now, of course, additional wattage, additional cost. We'll have the prices on all these devices down below. Some of them are on special right now. And when you, if you want to click through to our website and see all of our impressions on these devices, we'll break down the cost per watt hour, what the different types of functionality are. But again, these are just a sampling of devices that we've received. We received multiple that were 1500 watts, multiple that were 1200, multiple that were 600, multiple that were 300. We had a handful of power banks and these six devices were the best in class for each of those different category sizes. And so you may, the 300 watt EcoFlow may just suffice for you. I will mention that EcoFlow are the only one who sent us a solar panel to go with 110 watts. We did not do solar testing on these devices for a very specific reason. Um, I'm going to add some images into this video that are going to show you even the slight change in angle of the solar panel makes a huge difference in what the wattage input is for charging these devices. So kind of difficult to do them all. You'd have to do them all simultaneously. You'd have to have the you know similar or the same uh, solar panel for each one to make it fair. So you can refer to the manufacturer's websites for what their, uh, their basically charge times are with their, their approved solar panels. But other than that, this is pretty much a wrap. Like I say, there will be a link down below to our website. You'll be able to see uh, all of our impressions on these devices. And then there'll be links through if you want to purchase them while they're on sale. That's it.